Okay. Uh, so uh, I posted the, the third lab assignment and then the third lab assignment, uh, you are requested to design single cycle process using the So actually, uh, in the, in the uh, second lab assignment, so you, you design the data card element, the full data element, the instruction memory, uh, whether it's the file, ALU, and data memory. And then in the, uh, in the third lab assignment, and then uh, you are requested to uh, design single sided processor. So actually, in chapter four, we learn how to design the single sided processor architecture. So in the third lab assignment, so you need to uh, organize the data pad element, right? So, and then you, so you need to connect the uh, data pad element using wire. So, so if you can just connect the input and output port of the data pad element. And uh, the, in terms of four, we learn how to design control unit, right? So data pad element has a control port, control signal port. And then so the kitchen is that uh, you need to uh, generate the control signal for the target data pad element. Okay. So uh, in this uh, lab assignment, so I provide uh, this assembly code. So you know, and then actually I provide the uh, Translated machine code from uh, this assembly code. So, if you see the uh, instruction memory, so you can find the imem dot mem. So this is, and then this uh, file includes the this binary code, the binary data for the instruction memory. So, and the uh, single cycle process uh, uh, works. Then you can find that instructions are text from the instruction memory. And then the single cycle processor generates results based on the these instructions. Okay. So for this lab assignment, actually, uh, I provide the completed uh, data pass elements like uh, instruction memory, register file, uh, ALU, and data memory. So if you fail to design the, these elements, so don't worry about that. Actually, I provide the, the complicated design. Complicated data path element design. So you can, so even though you fail to design the, uh, these elements, then you can find the uh, completed design. And then you can also compare the, your design with the, this complete, this completed module, right? So uh, I provide the, so, so if, actually, if you, uh, uh, unzip, uh, uncrep, uncompress the, the zip file. You can find the several files, several system variable files, like imm.sv and then alu.sv. And you can pick these are the complete design. Okay. So you can find the uh, test bench, test bench for the uh, this single cycle uh, processor. So test bench name is the uh, tb underbar thing. So you can find here. So this is the oh, test bench name. So actually, I also provide the uh, complicated test bench. So which means that you don't need to design the your own single cycle process processor test bench. So but you need to complete the this top design. So this top design needs to include the uh, data pass elements and. And then also you need to design the control unit. And then you need to connect the input and output ports of data path element. And then if required, you need to include the multiplexer, right? So actually in chapter four, we learned that this single cycle process of design includes uh, several multiplexers, right? So you need to also include the multiplexer. The, the single cycle CPU that as a big, but you don't need to add multiplexer module. So you know, so we can uh, simply implement the multiplexer like the 
sein. Oh. So, like the oh. out signal of the multiplexer, you call cell like one, then A or A. So you can simply write the multiplexer code like this. So this is very similar to the if then else statement of C, right? So, but you know, you know, system very low and very low. So, and then if uh, if the some signals have the, some uh, combination combination value, the output of the combination and logic, then we need we need to use the assign statement. So. Actually, this is the output of the multiplexer and the selection signal is the input of the multiplexer. Okay. So you can just we can just add the, this statement for the multiplexer. So which means that you don't need to add multiplexer module. Okay. This, this is just a one line statement, right? So also I provide uh, some uh variable commands. So you can uh, compile the, your design and then the test bench of the, the single cycle processor module using the variable and then and if you uh, execute the generated binary file then you can find the uh report to that txt and then also you can find the wave that bcd so so if you see the, so you can also open the uh, this test bench file and you can find that test bench file is the uh, common C++, C++ file. And then also you can find that this file generator is report to that txt file. Okay, so this is just uh, it's a file output. So, and then, uh, so you can find the wave that BCD, and then you can check the wave forms of the uh, this single cycle processor using GPK wave. Okay, so the application. So you can open the this wave that BCD using the uh, GPK wave, and you can check the wave form of the this a uh, single cycle uh, processor. Okay, and then you can use the these wave forms for. Uh, verifying your design. So sometimes your design may so actually your design may generate the incorrect result. Then you need to fix the uh, you need to fix your design and then so you can use the this way form for verifying your design. Right? Okay so so Your task is to complete the this single cycle CPU that SV. Actually, so some other files are provided. So other files are the <coughs> completed uh, hardware components are uh, provided for this assignment. So you need to complete them. This design. So so if you struggle, uh, so if, if you struggle to do uh, this uh, design assignment, then you can uh, post questions or so you can stop by PA's office and also, so you can also uh, visit my office by appointment. Okay, so actually this design that is very critical for understanding, understanding, understanding the uh, architecture of the processor. Okay. So actually, even though you learn the architect of the single kind of processor, but this is just the some concept of the uh, single cycle processor design. So if you uh, <coughs> design the single single cycle processor by yourself, and I believe you can uh, understand the architecture of this processor uh, uh, more thoroughly. Okay. <clears throat> That's why I provide uh, this uh, design head. Okay. okay, any question? Okay. So, 
uh, in the previous class, we learned how to design the uh, pipeline architecture, and then also we learned how to connect the control signal. And then, you know, in order to implement the uh, pipeline architecture, then we need to insert pipelining registers. And then I said that these registers are the every <coughs> blocks, right? And then, so, Unlike the single sign processor in the pipeline processor, the task, task of the a single step is completed within the this uh, clock cycle of the this stage, pipeline stage. Okay, that's why we are using the <clears throat> deep clocks for pipeline register. Also, we learn how to uh, generate control signal and how to connect the control signals to the data path element of the pipeline processor. So, and then we learned that if some signals are required a certain stages of pipeline, pipeline stages, then these signals need to be propagated, propagated through the pipeline register. So for example, uh, uh, the, the control signals are generated in ID stage, and then if a control signal is required in if execution stage, ex stage, then this signal needs to be propagated to the ex stage via pipeline register. Okay, it's very important. So, which means that we need to align the timing of this signal in the pipeline pipeline architecture this is very important so if, if the timing is incorrect then this processor also will generate the incorrect result right that's why the timing is very critical for the this pipe, uh, pipeline architecture okay and then Pipeline architecture needs to handle hazard. So, what are hazard? So, hazard or hazard is an event that waste the clock cycles, right? And then also, first, uh, we will learn how to handle data hazard, okay? And then we learn that uh, in the pipeline architecture, so the test data can be folded. Okay. So usually the data is required in the yes stage, right? So at the at x1, x2, x3, at x1, x2, x3, then this instruction requires uh, operand from the register file. But actually, when this instruction is executed, the operation of the this instruction is executed in the ex stage. So which means that the operand, operand for this instruction is required at the start point of the ex stage. So which means that the required data can be folded in the, the, the input of the ALU, right? Because the data are required at the start, starting point of the ex stage so it means that we need to build the data path data path for data forging okay so think like this uh this is the alu this is alu and then alu receives the two input data and then AAU generates the one out data and then we learn that when the AAU receives these two input data and then we already know that so usually AAU receives data from the register file so like the, like the RS1 this is the RS2 and then register file generates the output for the RS1 and then output for the RS2 right the R data one, R data two. And then usually this R data is given to the ALU. 
but we learn oh this pipeline processor requires data coding path right and then this data is coded from the as we learn this data can be coded from the oh this pipeline register also is pipelining register right so which means that they can receive input data from the other sources okay so this is the common source common input data from the register file but we learned that the input data for this ALU can be coded from the first EX memory pipeline register and second memory right back pipeline register, right? So we learn from here. So data can be coded from this point to the input of the ALU or this point to the input of the ALU. So there are another input candidates for the, this ALU. And then it means that we need to select from the the, the, the first the zero candidate is the from the register file, but we actually uh, this data from the register file is also pipeline. So this means that this is the ID EX. This is, this is the from the register file. And then there are another two candidates. So the other two candidates are the data from the EX memory pipeline register and then memory write back pipeline register. So there are three candidates for the input of ALU. So which means that we need to select, we need to select from the these three candidates for the input of the ALU. So select. And then for this uh, selection, we require multi boxer. Okay. And then this multi box, so uh, multiplexer is called usually box. And then this, this box has three inputs, right? So this is the candidate zero, and then another two inputs are candidate one and candidate two. Candidate one is from the EX and memory pipeline register, and the candidate two is the memory write back pipeline register. Also, this data can be coded from the, to the, the second input of the ALU. So which means the ALU requires the, this coding multiplexer for each input, input of the ALU, and then there are three input signals for the, this coding multiplexer. So zero, one, two. And then if there is a multiplex, there is a multiplexer, then we need to control the, this multiplexer using the selection signal. And because this this, this multiplexer has three inputs, and we require so the bit this without this selected signal should be two bit, right? Because there are three inputs. So this is the data pass for the data board. Okay. So you can find the this completed design. So so this design shows the coding path in the pipeline architecture. So you can find multiplexer is four. You can find multiplexer, the first multiplexer, then this multiplexer is for the, the first in of the is ALU. Then you can find the, another multiplexer here. And then as I said, the multiplexer has 
three inputs. The one of input is from the, as you can see, this, this one. This is this this is the uh, input data from the register file. And then if we see the, the second and third input of the, this multiplexer, then you can find that uh, the second input is the second input comes from the memory right back pipelining register. So, so oh, you can find oh this is the multiplexer from right. So this multiplexer is the the result, the final result of the formal instruction. So actually, so as you can see, this input is comes from the memory write back pipelining register. As you can see, so this signal is selected from the uh, this, this signal comes from the memory write back pipeline register, and then it also selected by on control signal to multiply. Also. We can find that this third input of the, this multiplexer comes from the this wire. Okay, so, so this input comes from the execution and memory pipeline register. Okay, since we designed the data coding path in the pipeline register, and uh, required data can be coded from the uh, memory stage and write back stage. And then, as I mentioned, because uh, we insert a multiplexer, we require to generate selection signal for this multiplexer. The selection signal is Generated by folding unit. Okay, this folding unit is a, a different uh, kind of control unit because the uh, folding unit, this folding unit generates the control signal for folding multiplexer. Okay, so then how can you generate the, this folding multi, uh, control signal? So it means that the selection signal for the folding multiplexer. So if you see the input signals of the folding multiplex folding unit, then you can find that the RS1. RS1 is connected and RS2 is also given to the this folding unit. Also, you can find that this is the RD. RD is propagated and then RD from the execution and memory pipeline register. And then RD from the memory write back pipeline register is also given to the folding unit. So what does that mean? This folding unit generates the control signal for this folding multiplexer using RS1, <coughs> RS2, and RD. But ID from the, as you can see, ID from execution and memory pipeline register, and ID from memory write back pipeline register. Why? It is because in order to detect the folding condition, so so this is a, this is a complex example. But in order to detect the folding condition, then we need to check the, this is the RD of the formal instruction. And then RS1 or RS2 of the following instruction. So we need to just check the, the register number of the formal instruction and following instruction. So this is the RD and this is the RS1 or RS2. So if the RS1 or RS2 of the following instruction is the same to the RD of the 
formal instruction, then we can check that oh, the value of the formal instruction, the result of the formal instruction may be folded to the input of the ALU, right? By this condition. So in order to check the folding condition, then we need to check the RD and RS1. ID of the formal instruction and RS1 or S2 of the following instruction, right? This is obvious. So, not to check the folding, then we need to check the this, this condition. Okay? So, as you can see, uh, so it may be confused because the oh, signal name is too long, but as you can, as you learn, the ex slash mem represents the pipeline register between execution and memory stages. And then that RD represents the, the propagated RD, the destination register number from the pipeline register. So, which means that ex and memory that register rd represent the this is the rd in ex stage, right? So we just check the rd in ex stage and then rs1 in the ex stage. So why? From this example. So in this example, the X2 of the this sub instruction is folded to the, the following end instruction when this end instruction is in the X stage, right? So when the, this end instruction is in the X stage, sub instruction is in the memory stage. And we already know that the result of the sub instruction is already generated. So this is the RD in memory stage. So this is the output of the EX slash memory pipeline register. Okay. From here. And then, so if the this RD in Memory stage is same to the RS1 in the EX stage, then this result can be folded, right? And then this condition represents the, the condition of I said that I said. So <clears throat> RD is RD in. Memory stage, so this is the output of the ex slash memory <coughs> pipeline register. And then RD is checked with the RS1 and RS2 in the ex stage. So RD, ex, is the R1. So it represents the, this one. This is the RD, ex dot RS1. Okay, so this is checked with the ex memory RD. Okay, so simply the RD of the formal instruction is the same to the RS1 or RS2 of the following instruction, and then in the ex stage, then the result of the formal instruction can be folded. Okay. If this condition is met, then we can fold the RD to the RS1 or RS2 of the following instruction. Also, we need to check the, the folding from the right back stage. So in order to check the, this condition, then we need to check the, the pipeline register. The output of the pipeline, pipeline register, which means the 
the memory write that is the RD. If the, the RD in the write that AB is the same to the RS1 or RS2 of the uh, in the EX phase, then we can know that oh, the RD of the is write that phase can be folded into the input of the AU. Okay. So just think like this. So we learn the result of the formal instruction can be folded. And then we just check the, the register number of the RD and then the register number of the RS1 and RS2. And then this condition just explains the this condition. Okay. Okay. But we need to also consider the um, specific condition. So which means that even so RD. So the so destination register number is daily only if the Leg right signal is one. So what does that mean? Some instructions such as the so for example store word. Store word instruction does not have any RD, right? But the like the RS2 and RS1. But store instruction is also packed in the 32 bit instruction. Okay. And then if you see the some instruction format, then we can find that. RD, so usually the RD field of the other instruction. So for the other instruction is used as the immediate field of the forward instruction. Okay, so that means So let's see the, the instruction format here. So this is the, the risk five instruction format. So as you can see, the RD is here. So instruction uh, is instruction bit 11 down to seven. But if we use the core instruction, it's the S type instruction, this RD field is Occupied by immediate data, the part of immediate data. So, what does that mean? So, usually when the RD signal is generated, we just use the instruction bin number 11 down to 7 for the RD. And then, but for the other instruction, for example, store instruction does not be use the RD, but some data is also filled in this here. Understand? So which means that <clears throat> even though store instruction is executed, the RD field of the instruction it may have the, some garbage data. Okay? But even though some garbage data is used for the store instruction, so this garbage data does not influence the result of the this problem. So because we can control the behavior of this data with the control signal, right? So if, even though some garbage data is filled for the this idea of the store instruction, the regularized signal becomes zero for the store instruction. So which means that the store instruction does not write the data to the destination register. So in this case, we don't need to use the RD because the, this data is not valid. This data is not valid data. So what does that mean? If the regularized signal is zero, which means that even though the, this RD has the, some data, but this data is the garbage data. Okay, we need to ignore the, this data. So, which means that we need to also check the red-white signal. 
So which means even though the RB is same to the, the it's a it, no, execution and memory pipeline RB is the same to the RS1 in execution stage. But if the red light signal equal zero, which means that this RB is not valid. So in this case, even though this condition is met, but we, we don't need to pull the this RB data. Understand? So we need to check the validity of the RB using the red light signal. Also, the another condition is if the RB equal zero, so which means that the destination register is the zero register. But this zero, the output of this zero register is always zero. Okay, so even though it's like the add operation. If we just execute the add like x0, x1, x2, and then the value of x0 is not updated. The value of x0 is always zero. So for example, if the sub instruction is the following instruction, use the x4, x0, and x1. So we can find the all. So x0 is dependent between the add and sub instruction. But if we just hold the x1 plus x2 to the x0 of the sub instruction, then this processor will generate incorrect result, right? By definition, by the definition from instruction set architecture. The output of zero register is always distributed zero. So, which means that if the RD is zero, then we need to avoid data folding. Okay, if we perform, if we perform data folding, even though the RD is zero, then this will generate an incorrect result. Okay, so what does that mean? We need, we need to check the is for the, the normal folding condition. But when we check the equity condition for data folding, then we need to check the additional information. For example, we need to check the red white signal, also we need to check the RD value. If the RD value is zero, then we don't need to, actually we need to avoid data folding, okay? So, Additional condition is required. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so we need to well, limit so, the so, so, question is that what is the meaning of this instruction? No, actually, no meaning. But sometimes, sometimes the compiler may generate the, uh, some garbage instruction. It's actually, so these instructions are called the loop or loop instruction. It's a loop. It may be called the loop or no. So which means that this, this is the no operation. But it means that just one clock is wasted, but this instruction does not generate any valid result. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes this instruction is required. So. so so if the destination register is x0, then uh, this is not just a loop operation. Sometimes compiler generates this kind of instruction. Okay? So there is no meaning, but just one clock cycle is uh, taken. So once clock cycle is wasted. So here. So he has to about the internal folding in the register file. Okay. So when I uh, mentioned the, uh, the 
coding in the in this here as well. Okay. So folding between sub and add, so you can find that when the right peg is right peg is being processed by uh, this sub instruction, then the x2 is here, the x3 is read from the register file for the this add instruction. So then I mentioned that the internal folding is a support table. So we assume that the internal folding is a support table in the register file. So which means uh and the internal coding is uh, supported, then RD and RS1 and RS2 is checked in the register file. So this internal coding path is not included in the this folding multiplex because the folding is processed by register file. Okay, so it's a good question. Okay, this is the folding condition. So, so this is the uh, output signal from the folding unit, and then I mentioned that the output signals for from the folding units are the selection signals for folding multiplexer. So it is a so if the, the output signal is the zero zero, so this is the normal case. The source of the Input of ALU is the it comes from ID yes type binding register. So which means that this is the this one, right? So the data from the register file. Okay. And then if the this selection signal is one zero, so which means that the folding Source is the yes memory pipeline register. What does that mean? This means this one, this one. Okay. So you can find the if the coding selection signal is zero one, then source of the RD is the RD from memory and white back pipeline register. Okay. So we can select the, we can generate a folding unit, now generate the this selection signal, and the 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And then based on the, this selection signal, we can select the input signals of this ALU. Okay. Also, so another complex uh, condition. So, so this is the double data hedge. So what does that mean? So in this example, the we can find the two folding paths. So which means oh if we just focus on the oops. If we just focus on this source register x1, then we can find that. So this data can be folded from the so number one instruction, number one add, the so first add, this data can be folded. Also, this data can be folded to the RS1 of the third add instruction. Well, so, and the this the first end instruction is in the right text daisy, and then based on the our folding condition, this data can be folded to the, the third end instruction. Also, and the this first end instruction is in the right text daisy. The second end instruction is in the memory daisy, right? And then based on the folding condition, we learn. This data can be also folded to the X1. So this is the double data hazard. <laughs> so it means that the X1 can be folded from the 
the instruction in the white track stage or the instruction in the memory stage. Yeah, it, is, uh, it, it, we cannot use the, these two data. So which data should be folded in this case? So do we need to use the data from the first end or do we need to use the data from the second end? Which data should be folded? It's second. Why? Why? Because, yeah. <laughs> so, sorry about that. So, because what is the most recent value? So, actually, so we, actually, this type of code is not found because this is very ridiculous code. But we need to check the the this the some sequence tiny sequence of the instruction. So there are two x one, okay? So x one from the first add and x one from the second add. But what is the most recent data? This data is the more recent data. So, and the stored add instruction is restricted, then we need to use the data from the second add because for the, this add instruction, the data, data from the, the second add is the more recent data. And then we know the instructions are expected from top to bottom sequentially. So we need to use the this x1. Understand? So based on the folding conditions we learn, like fold A and the fold B here, then actually this code meets the this code meets the these two folding conditions, but we need to select the folding from the memory to next day in this case, okay? So this is the double data hazard condition. So we need to add up this condition for the uh, <clears throat> data folding, okay? So what does that mean? So, We already learned that if in order to generate the fold A equal 0, 1, so this is the folding from the uh, right back stage. And then in order to generate the, this fold A equal 0, 1, the so first we need to check the validity, the red light signal. And then, yeah, so we need to check the, the destination register is 0 or not. And we need to check the the folding from the memory stage, right? So this is the memory, and this is the EX stage, and then this is the right the stage. And then for the double data hazard condition, this can be folded also, this can be folded. But we know the folding from memory stage has higher priority. So in this case, if the, this is true and this is true, then this should be false, okay? Because the folding from memory stage has higher priority, okay? So, which means in order to generate the, this condition, we need to add up this condition, okay? Which means we need to add the priority from the uh, folding from right back and folding from memory stage. Okay. So this is the finalized folding condition. So actually the folding is very simple, but actually so we start from the this condition. So you can just check the register uh, destination register number and then source register number of the uh, formal instruction and following instructions. So this is the basic condition, but we need to check the corner cases, like the 
Please check the validity of the destination register by the by checking the label line. Also, we need to check the destination register number. If the destination register number is zero, then we need to avoid the data forwarding. So these are the corner cases. Also, we need to check the priority of the data forwarding. So the data, double data has a condition. The data should be forwarded from the memory stage. So what I want to say is that the baseline, the baseline condition is uh is easy. So I think you can easily understand the forwarding condition. Okay. But because of the co these corner cases, the forwarding control is a little bit tricky. It's a little bit uh, uh, tricky to understand, but which means that we require uh, a more complex uh, control folding unit. Okay, control unit. I think that folding unit is the kind of control unit. So, which means that we require more complex control algorithm or uh, control conditions. So, it is required. Not to generate the correct result, and we need to also consider the these corner cases. This is very important. So actually, in the hardware design, right? Uh, um, actually, the baseline, the baseline condition or baseline design is uh, is a little simple, but because of the, these corner cases, the hardware design gets more complex. Okay. So we need to consider the uh, corner cases uh, thoroughly. So this is the uh, completed uh, uh, folding path. And actually, uh, so if you see the, this pipeline architecture, then you can find the oops. The folding unit is included, and then also you can find that folding multiplexers are included and then for the unit receive the RS1 and RS2, so it's a source register in the EX stage, and then RD and then RD of the <clears throat> memory and write back stage. And then also this folding unit need to receive uh, additional control signals like the leg write signal. Okay. So you can find that oh this signal is also given to the Unit. So this signal is the actually red light signal. Okay, so we need to check the validity of the destination register. And then based on the this signal, for the unit generator, selection signals for this folding multiplexers. So this is the uh, complete design of the folding unit. Okay. So we handle the data folding the pipeline architecture. Any question? Okay. Now we need to handle the data hazard. Data hazard by load instruction. So actually, the even though the data dependencies are uh, found. But we don't need to waste the clock cycle because we can handle this data dependency using data folding. Okay. So, so this is the data folding we learned in the previous class. So, but if the formal instruction is loading, right, then the result of the, this load instruction is generate when the load instruction is in the memory stage, then and if the following instruction is in the ES stage, this data cannot be folded. Okay. So which means what clock cycle needs to be wasted. So it's like this. Uh, it's a busy time. Um, 
So, so actually, the formal instruction is load instruction, and then load is the RD over the load instruction is the next two. And then the following, the very next instruction is the end instruction. As you can see, the end instruction receives data from the this load instruction. So we, we already know that the, this data cannot be coded. So what should we do in the pipeline of the chart? So And the, so this is the ex daisy. This is the this is memory daisy. This is right track. And then and the load instruction is here and this is here. And then and the end instruction is in the ex daisy. We know oh this data cannot be coded, okay? Because the data is not ready in the pipeline processor. So what should we do? We know that end in, so for executing this end instruction, end instruction need wait one clock cycle. So it means if the if there is no data dependency between the load instruction and the end instruction, and then which means that when the load instruction is in the memory stage, the end instruction is in the next stage. But because of the data dependency and data hazard, when the load instruction is in the memory stage, and the instruction need to be in the ID stage. Okay, so which means even though the end instruction is the very next instruction of the load instruction, and the instruction need to wait in the ID stage for one clock. Okay, so this should be also controlling the pipeline processor. So, what I want to say is that if the load use data hazard is detected between the, the first is the detection of the load use hazard, and then the following instruction. The load instruction needs to be propagated to the next stage, but the following instruction needs to wait in the ID stage. So which means that the following instruction is not propagated to the next stage, okay? Because the data is not ready. This event is called the pipelining store. So we, we, we can say that the following instruction is stored in the ID stage, not to avoid the, uh, the wrong data coding. So for this case, if the formal instruction is the load instruction and then the following instruction is the, it requires the data from the formal load instruction, then if the this data hazard or data dependency is detected, the following instruction needs to wait in the ID stage for one clock cycle. And then I said this should be also controlled in the pipeline processor. Okay? So which means in order to support the data forwarding, we include forwarding unit. And then in order to support the load, load use data hazard, we need to also include another control unit called the hazard detection unit. Okay. So for the data data folding, we insert the include the this folding unit. And then in order to handle the load use data hazard, then we need to add the Hazard detection unit. So sometimes we, I can use the HDU hazard detection unit. So, and then like the data folding unit, then we need to also uh, generate the 
control signals for the hazard detection unit. So which control signal is detected or required? So So first, we need to consider which operation is required. So first, we need to detect hazard condition by load and then by following new junction. And then if the hazard is detected, then we need to, we need to generate the control signal. So which control is required? So, as I mentioned, when the load instruction is in the EX phase, and then in the follow instruction, and the instruction is in the ID phase, then we need to check the hazard between load and end instruction. Okay? And then if the hazard is detected, the load instruction needs to be propagated. So this is the normal operation for the load instruction. But for the end instruction, as I mentioned, end instruction should be stored in the ID stage. Okay, so the normal operation in the pipeline architecture is that the, the, the instruction is propagated via pipelining register. So this is the somewhat uh, special operation, which means that this instruction needs to be stored in no? a certain stage. So end instruction needs to be stored in the ID stage. And then if the end instruction is stored in the ID stage, how about the following instruction or instruction here? Or instruction also needs to be told, but in the instruction fetch stage. Okay, because the this end instruction is told, the so or instruction cannot be propagated in the next stage. So okay, understand? So what is required? So first the load is just propagated, and then the instruction in ID stage should be it's told. And then instruction in instruction text stage also stored. These are required operations by load use data agent. Okay. Then how can we store the instruction? So, so this is the instruction fetch stage and this is the instruction decoding stage. And then as you can see, you can find hazard detection unit here. And then you can find that hazard detection unit is in the ID stage, okay? It's in the ID stage. And then what are the output of the hazard detection unit? We can find three output control signals from the hazard detection unit. So one is the P0, so this is the PC, the PC update signal. And then also another signal is the is instructor fetch and ID light signal. And then another signal is the this signal in the mock. So control signal is R mock. So why? Oh, so I oh, forgot that. Also, when the instruction is stored in the ID stage, so in the EX stage, EX stage need to have the loop operation, which means that it is called a bubble, but this EX stage just includes the no operation so no instruction so which means the header detection unit also generates the no operation signal okay so 
So instruction in the uh, instruction fetch staging is called in the instruction fetch staging. So, so the instruction in ID staging is called. And then in the yes staging, the yes staging need to increase the no pitch bubble. Then how can we generate the no operation? So if the all control signals are zero, like the, and then we, we learn that when an instruction is executed, the instruction changes data in register file or data in memory. Also, some instructions may change the total counter, like the branch instruction, right? So, and then these control is the output of the these instructions are controlled by control signal. So you can also control the red white signal on. You can generate the red white. So which means that if the red white is one, the, red, the data in the register file is updated. So, so we can generate the mem white. So which means that the right the the data in the data memory is updated. Also, we can also control the branch. So if the branch is two, then the pitch is updated by target of the branch instruction. So control signal just controls the updates of the target component. But when the instruction is stored in the ID stage, then execution stage needs to include the no, no operation. So which is the, just the invalid operation. So which means we need to make make these signals zeros, okay, all zeros, okay. So the hazard is detected. The instruction is told in the instruction fetch stage, okay, and then instruction is also told in the ID stage. And then the loop instruction is generated by making all control signals zeros. Okay, then how can we how can we make instructions told in the ID stage? So this is the deep flip flop. And then if the deep flip flop does not update the output at the rising edge of the clock, then the instruction is maintained in the ID stage. You understand? It's like this. So this is the degree clock, then it's the clock signal, and then this is the input, and then this is the output of the degree clock. But this is the enable signal. So we learned about the enabled people now in the, in the start of the chapter four. So if this input plan update is not enabled, output is not updated. So which means that all so if the, this input plan is not updated, all signals in the ID stage is are maintained. Okay. Understand? That's why header detection unit generator instruction fetch and ID high timing white signal. Okay. If the this signal becomes zero, then the output of this pipeline register are not updated. So instructions are maintained in the ID state. So which means that the instruction is called in the ID space. So, so this is the same. If the PC has the same value, so which means that the, the PC update is not enabled, then the instruction is maintained in the instruction fetch stage. Do you understand? So we require these three operations. So instruction is stored in the ID stage, instruction is stored in the instruction fetch stage, and then 
no operation is generated for the EX phase. So you can find the these three control signals from the header detection unit. Okay. Then how can we detect the hazard condition? So it's simple, right? It's similar to the data forwarding. So what is required? You need to check the RB. But this RB is the RB of load instruction. Okay. If this is the load user header, so it means that the minute store instruction in the ID stage, if the formal instruction is, is load instruction. So if the RD of the load instruction is the same to the RS1 or RS2 of the following instruction, then minute store this instruction is the, the following instruction is the ID station. Okay. So this is the load use hazard detection condition. So in order to check the load instruction, we can check the mem read signal. So if the, if the, the instruction is the mem read, so, so control signal is the mem read, then you can find that, oh, this instruction is the load instruction. And then we can check the RD of the load instruction with the RS1 and RS2 of the following instruction. So, and then I mentioned that the header detection unit is in the ID stage. So, which means the header, this load use header is detected when the load instruction is in the out. this is the ex stage and then this is the id stage and when the load instruction is in the ex stage and then the follow instruction like the end instruction for example is in the id stage then hazard is detected okay so that's why this mem read control signal is in the ex stage so this is the output of ID and EX type timing register. So you can find that the RD, RD is in the EX stage. So we check the RD of the load instruction, and the load instruction is in the EX stage. And then we check the RS1 and RS2 of the this following instruction. Okay, so this is the hazard detection condition. So this is the condition. It's, a, it's simpler than the actually data for this, right? So if the hazard is detected, oh, hazard is detected, then this hazard detection unit generates the these control signal, PC drive, and then uh, instruction fetch and ID pipeline register, pipeline write signal, and then this control signal. So if the header hazard is detected, then PC write becomes zero. So which means that the PC is not updated. So which means the instruction is stored in the instruction fetch stage. And then instruction fetch and ID pipeline pipeline write signal is becomes so zero because the instruction is not properly to stored in the instruction fetch stage. Also the instruction is stored in the ID stage. And all control signal become zero. So this signal is selected. Okay. So this is the uh, design of header detection unit, and then also I uh, explain the control of load use data agent. So just remember the so this as I mentioned is a control unit, kind of control unit, so you need to understand the condition of the this data header. Also you need to understand the required control. 
required control if the condition is true. Okay. So because when the load with the header is detected, the one cycle is wasted, which which means that the performance is also degraded. So actually I already explained then we can avoid the so load with header by adjusting the order of instruction. So this is the compiler technique. So and then we are learning about the hardware, so the pipeline architecture. So actually the pipeline architecture also includes the header detection unit, so the it's loading you header usually handled by this header detection unit. Okay. So this is the little bit trick part of the pipeline architecture, pipeline architecture. Okay, so we need to include the more, the more control unit and with a folding or header detection unit. So it means we need to define the condition for data folding or data hazard, and then we need to define the, the required output, required controls for this data folding and then header detection unit. Okay. Uh, I'll start here. Uh, any questions? So I hope you can understand so this part. This is part is a little bit tricky. Okay. Mm -hmm. The technical rotation and then series of plan from that 